Mm. All right. So last week we started the the book of numbers uh, with an introduction, uh, kind of just kind of situating it uh, within the, the Pentateuch and within the uh, uh, sort of the meta narrative of um, of the Old Testament. So this week we're going to start, uh, you know, parsing through the um, the chapters. So week two is uh, focusing on Numbers chapters one through four. Uh, if you page through those uh, sections, um, you'll see uh, a lot of uh, a lot of work on census and a lot of work on um, some organization uh, that we'll talk about. So my uh, question I want to ask you is, um, you know, about census. But first, the key themes tonight, we're going to look at the census. We're going to look at the organization, the camp, and also the uh, duties of Levites. So the word census, what comes to mind when you hear the word census? Jesus, Jesus in Bethlehem. Okay. What about if we take it out of the book and it's more of a general global question? Can I count? Yeah. Okay, yeah. counting. All right. So so where where are we familiar with censuses at? Doesn't well, our doesn't our country yeah. do one every so yeah. often? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. when they're trying to figure out for voting purposes. No, every 10 mm -hmm. years. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't know how often we have one in our country. Is about every 10 years? Yeah, it's every 10 years on the year ending in zero, like 1990, 2000, 2010, okay. 2020. All right. And so so what happens when we have a census? People come door to door and they count how many people's in each residence. Okay. So when we have a set now, now do we, uh, how, do, how do we get those people? Volunteers. Okay, there's volunteers. So somebody could be volunteered or voluntold that you're going to go from uh, house to house and you're going to uh, count folks. All right. And so what's what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Figure out how many electoral votes you get, I guess, in this country. Okay, so for us, it, it has uh, uh, impact uh, around voting and, and uh, electoral uh, numbers and things like that. And money. For okay. taxes, mm -hmm. taxes, money. Good. All right. So if you think about a census, what do you think it would be? Um, what's the purpose in in the Bible, in, in the book of Numbers? So they were was God getting ready to tax them? Battles. Voting. Okay. Yeah, Battles. They, I agree. He was with Jeanette. He was looking for how many military age men there were. Okay. So, and so, and I think, uh, uh, Deb said battles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, in fact, and if you look at the text, it's, uh, it's looking at folks that are of age for, for battles. And so we see the census in, in chapter one. Um, and so you said that the purpose of this census was for battles. So in, in what way, is is it for battles? So, I mean, what's what's you know, what's the why why have a census? I guess they want to know like the age of the men. You know who had which tribe would have younger men, mm -hmm. perhaps. You know the age category that they want. Maybe I don't know. Okay, so I think uh, as we're thinking about the census, okay. Who is the one that actually called for the census? Who do you think called for the Lord? census? That God, God told Moses to, to do the census. Okay, mm -hmm. so so the census came from God. And so is God really all that interested in how many military people there are? No, yeah. he, he, he knew if he wanted to know. Okay, so, you know, we, we, we know that God would know um so did god really need to have a census the answer is probably not 
but God called for a census. So if God called for a census, what, what, why would God call for a census? Well, if you have to 12, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say when they entered the, the land, he knew they were going to, be, going to be fighting with the people that were there. So wouldn't they need a strong army? Okay. The census also was, uh, there are several different ones. One was they wanted to count all the military fighting men age 20 and over. Another one, they wanted to know uh, how many were the firstborn. Another uh, census, they wanted to know how many were a month or older. Another one, they wanted to know who was between the ages of 30 and 50. And they had different different locations that they had to camp as if there is different tribes set around all the perimeter of the uh, the land to keep anybody from the outside to, to coming in okay well what i'm thinking is if you have 12 tribes and if if tribe number seven is you know three quarters eligible age men that are going to battle and tribe number eight has like two you know it's it feels a little uh, imbalanced or something like that so maybe maybe out of fairness just like so that they would know you know like why this particular tribe isn't sending so many people okay mm. what is that that's how many people were the 12 tribes Six hundred and three thousand. He pulls this note out of the like, like the list. So, well, somebody's been doing their homework. All right, so so the, we got to when we think about the census, we have to say, okay, what is the purpose? So it's God who is um, the one who's instructing the census, and you know, God is God really concerned about numbers, as, uh, and when military things going on you know is god going to look and say okay we have six hundred thousand israelites and there's uh thirty thousand canaanites so yes you're going to go probably not because you know god is all powerful and we know that god uh, can do what god wants to do and so uh, the purpose of the census is is not so much for god but it's for the people um uh -huh. You know, and and you're and as Jeanette said, they're going to be going into the promised land. And even before they get to the promised land, uh, you know, they're going through the desert and they're going to begin to to run into people groups and there's going to be altercations and things going on in the desert. And then when they go into the promised land. So in some ways, the census was for the people. Um, and and to 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 instruct them, and so as we think about the census, then and purpose, it was called by God, but it was was for the people, and in some fashion, it was really uh, around the idea of how many fighting people there were, how strong their their group of people is. Now, as as uh, uh, Mark said. If we actually, you know, dissect the book of uh, Numbers, there's more than one census, okay? There's that in the chapter one, there's that first census of fighting people. There's a census about, um, you know, uh, uh, Levites. Then there's a census for the next generation. So lots of census going on here, okay? And so if we look at the, 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 um, the book and we begin... Um, it's, you know, Yahweh spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai and it's uh, the tent of assembly on the first of the month in the second year after they came out of the land of Egypt. How long was that? Second two years. years. Well, okay. So uh, it, uh, they came into the desert of Sinai in the tent of Sinai on the first month in the second year. So they had, been, how long had they been at si at, at the, the mountain for? Thir 38 years is what? what the spread was right okay and so i want you to take a census of the entire community according to their clans their families numbers and names of every male and then who is able to go to the war 
Okay. Now, one of the things that we have to think about is that initial statement, Yahweh spoke. Um, it happens over 150 times in the book. So remember when we talked last week about the naming of numbers, you know, from a Christian perspective, it came from, you know, uh, how the how the book was translated. OK, but for our Jewish brothers and sisters, a better translation of the book title would be in the wilderness or God spoke. So for them, it's all about God speaking to them. All right. And said um, and then if we look at each one, if we look at that first chapter, OK, we get these little chunks. So uh, verse 20 and verse 21 is sort of a. Um, a boiler plate for what we see with each tribe. So we would have Reuben, we would have uh, Zebulun, uh, we would have Benjamin. And so the descendants of Reuben or whatever tribe it is, and then this obviously Reuben's the firstborn, but it would have, you know, whatever. Uh, their genealogies according to their clans and um, all of those who are 20 years of old or above who were able to go to war, those who were counted from the tribe of whatever would be whatever. So for Reuben, it was 46,500. And so you begin to see that it's kind of a repeated thing, you know? So if you look, you, you kind of, and as you're reading, it's like, you know, this is deja vu all over again. It's Reuben. Then it's, uh, you know, Benjamin and it's, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and so when we get all of those kind of built up, as Mark said, that how many uh, fighting age Israelites were there? 603,550. So lots and lots of people. Now, one of the things we have to remember when the census of Israel was taken was there a group that was not counted. Levites. Levites. Yeah, the Levites weren't counted. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if we begin to think about um, this and, and we kind of move on, um, you will not muster the tribe of Levi. You will not take a census of them. Why, why no Israelite? I mean, uh, why no Levites? They're not going to be the fighters. Their their soul is to oh. to put up and guard and take down the tents. The somebody the, has the been temple, doing the will. reading. Somebody has been reading the book of numbers. <laughs> well, wait, didn't we know this from before? We knew this from before, didn't we? I don't know, but I was census. Reading. No, the no, census, no, 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 the Levites. The Levites were the assigned priests. For right, the... right. So, yeah, but this mm -hmm. is the first time when we're talking about this idea of, you know, not being counted in the census. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. They were well, they, excluded because they will be counted later. They will be in their own census. Mm -hmm. But what we what we're talking about right now is in this first census is that it's all the fighting people minus the tribe of Levi. Because, as as Mark said, they have a particular job to do, and it's not about fighting. What are they going to do? Uh, they're going to carry the tabernacle and all its vessels, and they're going to care for it. Um, also, one of their big jobs was guarding it. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so when the ta tabernacle is ready to go, they're going to uh, take it down and Ooh. put it, pack it up. They're going to carry it, and when they get to wherever they're going to go, they're the ones that are going to uh, stretch or put it back up, okay? And as a guard, if a stranger approaches it, they're going to put them to death, okay? Mm -hmm. So as we begin to think about this, um, the tabernacle had been set up, okay? The tabernacle had been set up, so they had camped at Sinai, you know, in, in the uh, the book of, what book was it that, that talked about the uh, the tabernacle? Leviticus. Leviticus. Yeah, the, okay, Leviticus, the last book. So in the book of Leviticus, it was all about them camping around Sinai and all of these specifics around building the tabernacle. Okay, so, and we were kind of left with the tabernacle being built 
Okay, so one month later, um, God calls for a census. And if you look at that little boilerplate, uh, one, uh, you know, repetition, this clan, that clan, this clan, that clan. So what does that repetition seem to do if you're reading it over and over again? Put you to sleep. <laughs> okay, so yes, it could put you to sleep. You want to get to the bottom and just say, okay, how many people are there? It's it's showing the enormity of it, though. Okay, yeah, it's 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 a, a kind of a reinforcement. Okay, it's a reinforcement, a reminder over and over again um, that uh, you know there's a lot of people here. So by the time you get to the bottom, um, there were a lot. Okay, and so. If we think about that, you know, the whole it, that 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 literary structure is really designed to reinforce, you know, the the growth, um, and the uh, and and how how big the clan has come. As I mentioned already, the Levites weren't counted because they were not fighters; um, they were there to transport the tabernacle and to perform guard duty. All right. And so if we think about the, the purpose of the census, I asked and you guys said it's all about battle. So everyone in Israel who is able to go to war. So it calculates the troops. OK, how many people are going to be available uh, when the need arises for them um, to go into battle? The other thing you have to think about is that, you know, as they tramped about in the desert, um, they they were actually wealthy people. How how did they get their wealth? Didn't Pharaoh give stuff? Yeah, remember when when they when we talked about the Exodus? Um, mm -hmm. when they left, they didn't leave empty-handed. You know, some of the stuff that they had was used to build the tabernacle. But they still had a lot of stuff, so they were vulnerable, and so they needed to have a, a group of of uh, people that uh, you know were available to to protect themselves. So they're not only to go into a place and dominate it, but also to protect themselves. Um, the other thing that we have to remember is that you know way back yonder. It seems like eons and eons ago, when we were in the book of Genesis, there was a promise, a promise to Abraham. And what was that promise? The size of his family. Right. He, he said that uh, I'm going to make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. It's Genesis 22, 17. And so in some ways, as as you think about this uh, um, census, it's also an affirmation of, you know, part of this uh, um, Abrahamic covenant that, you know, the, the promise that God made way, 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 way back, you know, many moons ago to, to Abraham is, is coming to uh, fruition. <laughs> okay. And. The other thing we have to think about is that, you know, not only was it about uh, a battle ready people, wasn't it wasn't just about uh, reaffirming a covenant. OK, but it was also a way that Israel was made aware of their family and reminded them that they're part of an interconnected community. OK. Um, and, you know, they were part of a vulnerable community. OK, they had lots of wealth when they when they left uh, Egypt and, you know, they were wandering around in the desert. Um, and as your name was mentioned in the book, you know, um, it really uh, emphasized the importance of the individual. OK, also. It helped to emphasize the interdependence of the community because when you took the census, how was the census taken? In person. It was in person, but there yeah. it was it was they had 
folks that leaders of each clan, each family did the the uh, counting and then kind of reported in. And so it was it was a massive undertaking. And so there was this interdependence that really happened in order for the census to occur. Um, the other thing is it, it helped to uh, remind them about the, the kind of co uh, community they were, that they were committed. Um, because when, when we think about names, uh, typically when we name people, do we spend a lot of time really thinking about names? Not so much these days. Not so much these days, but um, in, the, in the ancient world, names were extremely important. And they they were meaningful. And so, you know, when you saw these names coming up in the census, OK, they reminded the people that that, you know, you know, divine names like, you know, God is with us. God is our protector. OK, um, part of this, as as you think about the uh, the um, the community, it was a worshiping community. OK, the you know the Le you know you would remember that the levites were excluded because why um they were responsible for the tabernacle and responsible for worshiping so that that community was not only one that was uh you know just being battle ready but it was also worshiping um and they were an obedient community god commanded and um the israelites did what god commanded so that when we think about the census, then it, it's it's really more more than just counting numbers and how many bodies do we have to go into battle. Okay, um, mm -hmm. really talks and emphasizes God's promises and emphasizes this idea of of community. Um, and 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 so as you think about that, then how how does that have an impact or should it have an impact on us as you know 21st century christians not so much that um, i'm not talking about the census there and naming but this whole idea of reminding us of the maybe the importance of census well i guess one of the things that kind of maybe i'm not sure if this is what you're thinking about is that not everybody's role here is the same. And so, okay. you know, if, if, if part of it is the reminder of what the community is like, that um, God is reminding, you know, you're counting these folks for one purpose and, and not the Levites, or you're going to count them later for another purpose that for us too, um, there is that, that truth. Okay. Other thoughts? My mind keeps, it's jumping ahead, I think, but my mind keeps going back to the fact that there's two senses going on eventually. One at the beginning when they're wandering through the desert, and then the other one is toward the end mm -hmm. so that they can see how much they've grown as a community. Well, it's actually with the two census, it's actually two different groups of people. Oh, because because the set, second census happens after that first generation has died out and they're getting ready to go back into the promised land. Yeah, but as a as a people, as a collectively. Yeah. OK. Yep. So kind of what I think, you know, it's it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, it's, it's hard to believe, but, uh, you know, it was only a, uh, like a couple of weeks ago that I, I, ce uh, I celebrated another anniversary at the church. Um, you know, it's hard to believe that I'm actually in my uh, 24th year there. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. Um, but, you know, kind of thinking uh, about my time at, at Christ Church and thinking about, you know, this idea of census is, you know, names and writing names down um there's kind of you know like a rich rich history in kind of remembering like you know um dick unangst mm. 
Madonna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bob Carmichael. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, what, what was the guy's name? I can't remember his name. The big bassy voice. Tom Kaiser. Yes, thank you. Tom Kaiser, mm -hmm. Mr. Boston. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you think about that, you know, it's 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 it those 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 are names and and, and there's other other people that all of us could remember. You know, um, you know, the Rob Rob Palandra, you know, what, what whoever, but the names of these people that weren't just names, mm -hmm. but carried sort of um a rich history that helps you remember about the place and about the community. And so in some ways, as, as you know, for us, it's a little bit foreign because, you know, we're, we're reading names and we really don't know who they are. Mm. But for those people who in, in, in the years going into that promised land that would read this, it was, it was a rich reminder about their history, mm. you know, not only their history as a community, but also <clears throat> history as uh, as God's people. So, as you think about this idea then of census, um, it tells a rich story about community and what mm -hmm. kind of community it is. All right. So, besides the census, you know, there's a, in chapter two, we kind of move on and. And and a little bit of time is spent uh, around the organization of the camp. Okay, so in chapter 2, verse 2, Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, The Israelites will encamp each with his standard. So they're they're marking their 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 banner. Um, with a banner according to their families, they will encamp around the tent of assembly. The ones who encamp on the eastern side toward the sunrise will be of the standard of the camp of Judah, according to their divisions. And then it moves on. And so if you take that chapter and you kind of look at, you know, what's going on. So we have in the center, this gray area, is the tabernacle. Okay. And then in the red around the tabernacle were the priests okay the different uh you know uh the the priests then the uh you know levites from the the marianites the gershonites and the kohathites okay and then on the outside were all of the tribes and on the eastern side okay was the tribe of judah Okay. And then, you know, in this section, Dan would be the center. In this side, Reuben, and this side, Ephraim. Okay. And so this is the kind of arrangement that uh, um, God instructed them when they were um, set up in camp. So what do you, what do you think about this? It's like you're circling the wagons to protect what's in the center. Okay, so you're circling the wagons to protect what's in the center? Okay. The tabernacle. Yes. What's that, Alan? The tabernacle there. Yep, tabernacle's in the middle. See. And all these other people. Any other thoughts as you look at it? It's very organized. <laughs> it's extremely organized, extremely organized. I mean, because you could really say, okay, put this, put the uh, tabernacle in the center, put the priests around it, and then put all of the uh, tribes around that. But mm. it, it goes way beyond that very, very uh, organized and specific. I, I think it's, and I don't, know the rationale but i think the placement of the tribes were based on the the numbers of people in the census uh some of it was but some of it has to do with like for example why why judah in the front what's is there is there a a 
significance to Judah? Well, Judah, Jesus comes from there. Yep, yep. So the, the head is Judah, and, and that is the tribe in which Jesus is going to come. But as we think about this, so we we, we can kind of glean that, first of all, you know, this is a very orderly kind of thing. Um, secondly, that, you know, that this kind of sets up a, a, um, a situation where we're trying maybe to protect the, the tabernacle, maybe from the outside. Um, any other thoughts? Maybe it's, you know, how they, they put a lot behind firstborn, secondborn. I, maybe the positions that they're in had something to do with with um, place of birth or place of honor or whatnot. Because they they talked about Judah facing the east where they could see the first sunrise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It really wasn't wasn't to do with firstborn per se. It was more around the idea of you know uh, honor within the within the families. So um, as you kind of think about this, you know, what's what's at the center? What's at the center there? The, 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 the ark. ark. Okay, so yeah, the, so it's the tabernacle. The ark is there. God. Okay, good. So in you know in this section, we would have you know God. We'd have the holy of holies right here. That's sort of the you know this tabernacle represents what. God's, God's house. house, the holiness, so the most holy place. And then it's it's circled by holiness and then less holy as we go. So as we go towards the center, we're, we're, it's, it's kind of more holy, if you will. And so if we look at this when they moved, okay, so that's when they when they set up camp kind of when they moved and mark and I, I showed you the direction the tabernacle would be in the middle okay these tribes would be in front and these tribes would be in the back so again a very orderly way of doing it with you know even as they move and even as they camp who's at the center god god and so you know in this organization so it, the book speaks about even in our our coming, even in our going, even in our living, who's at the center or who should be at the center? God. God. Okay. So we yeah. see that. Um, and so the organizational structure of the of the camp really is is first a reminder that God should be at the center. Okay, so God should be at the center. Um, but also, in some ways, it do you, could it provide a protective function? Yeah, because if, if they're attacked by any outsiders, the, the thousands of people are protecting the tabernacle or between tabernacle and the outsiders okay so so they're tr in a way we're trying to protect the um the tabernacle um any other thoughts mm -hmm. no all right so one of the things we have to think about is you know we spent a lot of time um you know first of all talking about the tabernacle you know in our last uh in our last uh, uh, Bible study. And so we, 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 when we learned about the tabernacle, what was the tabernacle? It was God's house, right? Mm -hmm. And what did, what did we learn about the tabernacle? It was really what? The, the most holy place. Okay. I mean but in some ways it was almost like a mini garden, right? In some ways, it was a microcosm of what was described in the book of, of uh, uh, Genesis. Genesis. In the center, we had 
you know, the garden where God or God was, then it was placed in Eden and it was around this, this, this uh, wilderness. And so in that central area, okay, we had the holy of, you know, the holy, the presence of God. And so that tabernacle right here, then, you know, is actually now kind of being expanded, if you will, into um, an, a, a bigger community. So that what we're going to see is that this community becomes a community that's centered around God, a community that's holy. It's, you know, so as we look at all of this stuff, it's really a reflection of this garden that we're talking about in in uh, in uh, Genesis, okay? And so, if we think about that for a minute, then, um, why is that important to protect? Why is it important? Why is the the it gets to the duties of the Levites? Uh, why why is there this this need to protect? And so that leads us into chapter three. And so when we think about chapter three, okay, it's the duty of the Levites. So if I say the word Levites, we already talked a little bit about it. So what what did we hear already that their roles and responsibilities were? transport and protect okay they're going to transport they're going to set up take down and they're going to protect okay but what what else would would be their roles and responsibilities the priests they're the ones that are in contact with god right and so a subset of those levites are the priests okay um and they're responsible for all of the sacrifices and such and so if we look at uh, you know, this chapter, verse three, these are the genealogies. So what do we have there, Mark? We have what, another genealogy? But this one's census. the, or, yeah, I'm sorry, another census. And this is a census of Levites. the Levites. So why in the world do we need a census of Levites, do you think? Well, this is the same thing like you were saying about remembering those who came before. So if you're thinking back, like, you know, this is Aaron, um, Aaron's kids, right? The sons of Aaron. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. And so we, we think about Aaron and all that, you know, we know about him and they would too. Um, same way you were saying, if you lift up names of people from, from the church that we remember, that there's a heritage about the church community that's, you know, held like you can't think of Bob Carmichael, not think of on the way to Cape May or whatever, you know. <laughs> I really think about uh, centurions when I think about Bob. <laughs> yeah. he, took his, he took his role and he took his recruitment of uh, centurions very, very seriously. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, in some ways, in, it inspires um, uh, reminiscence of uh, of those that are going before. I and think yeah. it's showing uh, the the future as well. Who, in what way? You have. Well, you you want to know how young and how old your people are for, okay, um, for for moving into the future, so that you always have somebody there to protect and to to carry on the duties. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Uh, does, do the priests again point to Jesus because Jesus is the prophet, priest, and king. So is it pointing to Jesus somehow? Well, I think, like I think showing... that the priestly function will point to Jesus, but Jesus didn't come from the tribe of Levi. No, in the I know. tribe of Judah. Judah. So, you know, one of the things that we think about uh, when we think about the Levites, though, and, and this is kind of a, a, a little bit um, kind of into that a bit, um, is that, you know, some of the duties as the duties of, 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 uh, of a 
more more so a priest would point to Jesus. And so uh, we 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 have a census of the Levites of the Levites, and then um, their uh, responsibilities are again uh, reiterated. Okay, bring near the tribe of Levi and set the tribe before Aaron the priest, and they will minister him. So these are folks that are going to minister around uh, Aaron. Okay. Um, and they shall observe his duties and the duties of the entire community before the tent of assembly to do the work of the tabernacle. Okay. And so when we, what, when you think about the work of the tabernacle, what, what, what is the work of the tabernacle? Well, you have to build it. Okay. You, you, you have to, not just the physical structure, but then you have the, Everything inside the tables, the coverings, you have to maintain it. The curtains, okay. And but once that's up and moving, then what? What do we need to do? Sacrifice. Yeah. Sacrifice. So you got out there. So these, so these people are not. You know, the the general Levites aren't going to be the ones doing the sacrificing, but there's a lot of support that that goes around that. And so when you think about the work of the tabernacle, yes, yeah, the setting up and taking down and the movement, but we're in place. There's a lot of work that goes on as well. Okay. And so we have this idea of Levites, but we got to remember we have Levites and we have priests. Okay. And so the priests came from one particular a uh, tribe of Levi. That was the family of Aaron. Now remember, Aaron was just one of many within the Levite family. But so that one line, that that line of Aaron is the group that's going to be teased out to be the priests. Okay. All of the other folks within Levi are going to be Levites. Okay. Um and so it's actually kind of interesting how it was set up because you think about it, if you were uh, within that uh, Levite tribe, you know, what, what, what job would you be jonesing for? Do you want to be a priest? Yeah. Yeah. You want to be a priest. You don't want to be the schmuck that's, uh, you know, doing all of the, you know, flinging cow dung and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But so uh, it's kind of interesting that, you know, it was set up in a particular way. Okay. So that people had, had defined roles. Okay. So that these, the holy tasks um, couldn't be coveted, uh, couldn't be bought, couldn't be uh, demanded um, because they were exclusively given to uh, a, a family and a birthright. And as we mentioned already, the duties, they dismantled, carried, reassembled the tabernacle. Um, one of the big things we, we don't necessarily think of very much is the idea of uh, guarding uh, the tabernacle from intruders, from other people. But the other thing that they did was they protected the people from Yahweh's holy presence. And, and, and what way would, do you think that would happen? Well, we, we were saying, we were studying Leviticus, that holiness is dangerous. Right. right. Yeah. So, you had that picture where you had the sun and the little, right. uh, the little rocket ship that was going close. And the closer and closer and closer it gets, it becomes more dangerous to be in God's presence. Okay. Mm. Um, and so it protected the people from from God's presence. But also, there you oh. go, the, 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 the rocket ships. Rocket ships. Um, it also <laughs> ensured that God's continued presence with Israel. Um, what, what do I mean by that? Think back to our, our study of Leviticus. What happened in almost the very center of the book? Well, I mean, there was this, I don't know if you're thinking about the, the 
the priests coming from Aaron, he had two sons that got too close to the fire. Right. right? They and, had the yeah. story of the two sons. And for some reason, it, it said they used uh, inappropriate fire. And so they had done something to, in some ways, I'm going to say, use the word desecrate. Okay. Mm. The, um, the temple. And there was a big problem because God could not be near the unholy, the unclean. And so there's a very real present or, or the real problem that, you know, if, um, you know, for some reason that that temple could get violated, that God's spirit could exit, could leave. Um, now, that becomes really, really, really important if you kind of fast forward into the book of the Old Testament, in, in, further into the Old Testament. Where do we see that kind of thing happening? The garden. No, no, fast forward back. Oh, oh. And in, in further into the book of, away from Genesis, into the oh. prophets. Lion's Den? No, well, no, no. So when when we think about, you know, the, the they, 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 um, they settle the promised land, they settle in, and what do they do? They build Oh, the, the golden calf and well no no the that's Tower of Babel. No, no, other way, other way. <laughs> so you're going backwards. I'm going I'm going forwards, forwards. So oh, they what? they settle the Babel? they settle the Holy Land, the temple is built. Okay. And then what happens with the prophets? What's happening with Jeremiah? What's happening with uh uh, Ezekiel and those kinds of things. What's what's the basic when we think about the, uh, um, you know, the exiles, Babylonian Syrian exiles. The people are being taken away, but at the same time, God's presence is leaving the temple. And so when they when they come back and the temple is rebuilt, so we have the second temple, you know, one of the tensions that they have is that they they want God and God's presence to reside in that temple like it had done in the very beginning. But there was always that tension where it had God's presence had never been fully realized in that place. So you know that's one of the jobs of the the Levites and the priests was to uh, ensure God's presence in that area. Another duty that we don't really think about is that they served God as a replacement for the firstborn of all of the Israelites. Now think about um, in Exodus, we have Passover. Mm -hmm. So what happened in Passover? The firstborn sons of, of everybody except the Jews were killed, the, those who okay. they so, were protected. So, yeah, so the firstborn, so we have the... the uh, the instruction that you're supposed to kill a lamb and you're supposed to spread the uh, blood <laughs> over the lentil, a, a lentil, yeah. lentil of the door and the, um, you know, the, the folks, the firstborn in there would be spared. But what, as part of that, what did, what did God say, you know, when the firstborn were spared? They're dedicated to him. Right. The firstborn <laughs> belong to, to God. The firstborn belonged to God. And oh. so when the Levites um, are given to God, in a way they, they perform a role of redemption and serve God in place of that firstborn of all the other families. Does that make sense? Am I, am I explaining it okay? 
Yeah, yeah but but if they are, does uh, how do I ask this? Do the do the families realize that, and they say, "Oh, so we don't actually have to dedicate our child to"? to... Well, they do. They still dedicate their child, but realizing that. You know, the child doesn't need to be left at the temple to serve. Oh, I see. And because, okay. and because there's also a tax. And that's part of that role of the um of the uh the census was it was a census of how many Levites there were. Okay. Because how many of them were there and how many other were there to 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 provide that one to one. Um because they were actually a little less, so that God said they needed to provide this tax as well. Okay, and so uh, the other thing that the, the the Levites and the and the priests did were, you know, they were visible people, um, and so they were a reminder to all of the other people around there, um, you know, reminding them of the idea of surrender and substitution. Okay, so they had some pretty important roles. Okay, um, and in some ways, we as we think about Levites, we also need to think about you know this idea of um, Adam and Eve. And so, if we think about Adam and Eve, what would you say that their their idea was? What was what was their role? God put them in a garden garden to do what take care of it okay to take care of it and in genesis 2 15 and uh it says the lord god took the man put him in the garden of eden to work it and take care of it and if you look at what is the role of the levites in the tabernacle they're to take mm -hmm. care of it and to do the work and so in some ways, as we think about this idea of community and this idea that a commu the community is becoming a, a, a new kind of model for um, the garden, you know, we have, you know, in the center was the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, then we had the garden with the people at Eden and then the wilderness out there. And so in some ways, this these uh, Levites are now taking the place of Adam and Eve, creating a connection, um, you know, within the garden. OK, and so, you know, if we think about, you know, our conversation so far, we talked about uh, a census. And in fact, multiple censuses. We talked about this idea of organization, and we talked about this group of people, okay? And so, you know, it, it, it was set up, and, and it kind of worked for, um, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, for the Israelites. But I guess I'm getting at the so what? What, what does it matter for us today? Does it... Uh, apply to us does it have anything to say to us today as 21st century christians well one of the things that just i've been just thinking about for a couple of minutes now is this this idea that god had said it at passover i'm you know I'm claiming the firstborn, but then it's not like God changed his mind here um, in numbers, but, but explicitly states, okay, the Levites are a substitute now for this thing that I had you do before. So it, that part of it at least says to me that if we listen to what God commands, that even though we might not understand the outcome or the purpose at first, that later it's going to, that God knows what he's doing and to trust that it will, that the plan will play out 
in a way that makes sense later. Okay. Hmm. Other thoughts? One of the things I kind of think about is, uh, you know, the, the linkage between, you know, if you think about in the New Testament, um, you know, you have, um, you have Paul talk about Jesus kind of as, as the new Adam. And, and kind of as I think about, you know, okay, you know, how did, how did Paul make that leap? Jesus, the new Adam. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for me, I, I, you know, have begun to see the linkage. Okay. You had Adam and Eve. Okay. Then you had the, the priests that, that are serving, you know, in this, this community that's modeled after a garden, you know, and Jesus has that new priestly role. So he becomes, you know, there, that linkage back to the, to the new Adam. I find that kind of, Kind of interesting so jesus is in in charge of taking care of the creation you mean well it, well not so much but he 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 serves as that that intermediary because that's what adam and eve were doing serving oh. as they they had a priestly role and the priests have that role that intermediary role and now jesus has that intermediary role if you think about the the what we read does it have any impact or should it have any impact on the way that we kind of maybe live or see ourselves in community today that we all have a role and responsibility okay They they talk about um, descendants, you know, so and so, son of so and so. Okay. So you 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 have the family um, heritage and everything. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I I yeah I I think that that's that's important as well. I mean, I kind of look at it like you know, okay, we don't necessarily have a census and it's, i mean the, the closest i can think about when we have a census does anybody have a big uh dusty bible with the family tree in it mm -hmm. yeah. no i mean they were they were big i mean i i think we had one once upon a time um but uh does everybody here have uh, a family photo album mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and you can, do. your parents do <laughs> But, all sorts of them. Yeah, and you know if 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 you uh, come to our house, Judy has you know she's the photo album queen. You know all over the place. You know there's some with Matthew. There's some, but they got the ones that are just full of books. Um, and and so as you open those up and you begin to see people, it's it's almost like a a a, a living, breathing census, if you will. <laughs> and and and. It, it it becomes important for you to know who you are. Well, it's it's kind of ironic. I mean, case in point, while we're doing this here, my phone and Mark's phone were blowing up because my dad was spamming us with photos of people from this family reunion, of you know, mm -hmm. different pairings, different groupings, and um, Mark is getting to know my family based like like who are these two people you know um i was trying to explain to him who's connected to who and who comes from who and and that like who comes from who thing is i don't know if, if, when you're a little kid you, you don't care <laughs> but yeah. then as you get older you try to figure it out because it matters a lot more what, and why why does it matter a lot more check my phone okay uh it matters a lot <laughs> again a case in point matters a lot more because you you need to know what your roots are like mm -hmm. um and the who you're connected to 
Right. It's it, as as Herman just said. It, it, it's about identity, and and knowing who you are, not only where you come from, but you know what are the what are the social mores, what what are the the values, um, and all of that kind of stuff. Now that that happens within a family, but it also happens within a community of faith and and so it becomes important as you think about uh you know the numbers it was important for them you know so that they knew their identity knew their their their, their, their who they were and so it becomes that way not only for families uh but also for faith communities who they are I mean, I find it still very intriguing, um, you know, that, okay, there's two Methodist churches a quarter mile apart on the Amazing. same street and even on the same side of the street. Amazing. Um, yeah, well, it's amazing. And and knowing the history, okay, they come from two different places. One comes from a uh, uh, EUB background. One comes from Methodist Episcopal background. Um mm. And, and, you know, they, they have been sort of kind of, I'm going to say diametrically opposed to one another. Um, and even, you know, to this day, there's remnants of that. Um, and, you know, it's okay. Why? Well, it comes from knowing the, the history, the, the census, if you will, mm. um, you know, why why does our church value missions as much as it does versus other churches that may not it comes from you know that the 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 census the the the, the people that have come before so you know as i i think about um about uh you know this stuff and you know what does it have to say for for us Okay, so census people and 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 not just recording it, but remembering and bringing it up, keeping it fresh becomes important. Okay, I think the other thing that that becomes important if we're looking at this today is you know what should what should the a, a model community look like? What should be at the center of it? Okay, whether we're coming, whether we're going, whether we're there, it's it's the presence of God. God kind of pulls it together, but also God is the organizing center of that. And I think the last thing as as you think about this is that, you know, typically we think about priests. So when we think about priests, we typically think about our uh, our, our our Roman Catholic brothers who have been you know, organized and placed in that priestly role. But if we're thinking about the priestly role and we're thinking about it in the context of uh, the Pentateuch and up to now, while there were people that were officially kind of worked in the temple, everyone was called to be a priest. Everyone was called to be that conduit to bring the holy. And so it is for us as well today. Um, so as, as we begin to think about this idea of numbers then, um, you know, it's not just an ancient dusty book that has, uh, you know, stuff that puts us to sleep at night instead of <laughs> counting sheep, but it really has some, some things that speak into our lives today. All right, so where are we going? So uh, we finished week one in the introduction. We finished week two today. Uh, next week, um, if you want to do some reading, um, week three, we're going to be in Numbers uh, chapter five through 10a, um, looking at some of the purity laws and some of the preparations um, uh, for moving. Okay. Um, any... Uh, any thoughts, comments, any kind of revelations that people have gotten so far? Well, that initial numbers of people that was 
leaving Egypt and going through the desert, the numbers were much greater than I imagined. Well, yes. yeah, it, it's kind of interesting because they were just males. So, uh, uh, you and know, yes, and this were only the males. Yeah. And if you looked at numbers and stuff, um, you know, Bible scholars would say that there were probably about 2 million people Ooh, tramping wow. through the desert. Wow. Yeah, I, I figured there were hundreds to thousands, but not hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I can't go along with the 2 million line if there's 600,000 males of military age. How many older males are they? And then you figure four or five wives for every male. And, and how many kids? Six, seven, eight for every wife. Mm -hmm. it, it's got to be 10 million. Well, I, I can only tell you what I read. Um, but the other thing, it's a, for, for full transparency, I mean, um, one could one could believe the literal numbers. Um, and when you believe the literal numbers, there are issues and problems with that. Um, some scholars would argue against literal numbers, but more of a uh, hyperbolic uh, type of thing to um, make a theological statement. So I'm not going to get into the weeds there. I don't want to get into the weeds there. Um, <laughs> I just want for transparency's sake, you know, that you should know that there's there's people on both sides of the fence. This growth, though, this this population growth is enough, maybe like another reason why they had to run around for 40 years. They needed oh. the Yeah, well, could be. I think the bigger thing is they were disobedient. Gotcha. <laughs> Any other uh, last minute thoughts or uh, revelations? I have a revelation that the Phillies are going to get eliminated this year. All right. Well, we're not we're not going to entertain that one, Will. That's that's too much negativity. <laughs> All right. I'm 